so that you don't have to, you don't have to suffer and die for your own sin. Jesus suffered and died for your sin to give you eternal life. Very, very simple. It's not rocket science. It's not a root in your religion. It's introducing you to the Godhead through the Son. And uh, the Bible speaks about this, Proverbs verse 31, uh, chapter 31, verse 4. Um, what is God's name and what is his son's name if you can tell that's the end of that verse and his various, uh, various verses even in the Quran that allude to Jesus being the word of God uh, Surah 33 Surah 19 verse 33 Jesus talks about his resurrection blessed is the day I die blessed is the day I'm resurrected from the dead Surah 19 33 a lot of people don't know that. It does talk about Jesus' death and resurrection in the Quran as well. And so, also in the Vedas, I believe one of the Sanskrit books of the Hindus. Right now there's about 100 million Christians in India. Most of them are Hindus that came across and read about the one who sacrificed himself for the sins of the people. It's called the Prajapati sacrifice. That's why there's 
people from there coming to Christ. But in this land, the history of this land was that uh, when the, we had the printing press and then the King James Bible was printed and the people wanted to read the Word of God for themselves, they found out that Catholic religion was not rooted in the Word of God. And so they departed from that church and they started what was called the Reformation, where people could understand what God's Word was for themselves and follow Jesus Christ for themselves. So that's the feeling that we have. That's good. So that's a brief history, that's what five minutes have taken to explain to you the gospel, explain to you about Jesus in three different holy books, from the Old Testament, the Quran and the Vedas as well. And so it's quite amazing. Everybody has an opinion about Jesus, but what I did, I prayed to God to ask if I needed Jesus to enter into heaven, and within a few days people were talking to me about Jesus and I basically prayed, prayed more about it and then accepted Christ as my Lord and Saviour, that's how I did it, I didn't read the Bible or anything like that, I just was convinced that Jesus uh, was who he said he was and uh, felt a lot of love from these uh, believers, these Christians, so that's why I asked Jesus into my life and I'm saved, I've been saved over 20 years, I've seen many miracles happen as well, people recovering from diseases different other things, so praise the Lord, hope you can come into a knowledge and a relationship with the Son of God, Jesus says, there's no way to the Father except through me. Thank <laughs> you. 
forgiveness in one because only one gave his life for you and that was Yeshua Jesus the Christ of Nazareth shed his blood for your sin no other Buddha didn't do it Mohammed didn't do it none of these prophets or men of God gave their life for your sin only one did it was the father's plan from the beginning even if you study the stars the star signs in the sky and you begin with the uh, Virgin, Virgo the Virgin, that's speaking of Jesus' first coming, and then 12 star signs later, we get Leo the Lion, and that's Jesus Christ, the righteous judge who comes back and judges the earth. So there's no mistake about who Jesus is, he's the judge of the earth, but I want you to know him as saviour today. Very important that we understand that the blood that Jesus shed on the cross was for your sin. Hallelujah. You've got to understand that. Because your soul is very precious to God. God does not want you to end up in hell because of lack of knowledge of His Son. The fact that He did send His Son into the world. John 3.16 God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. This is talking 
about when the Holy Spirit comes and fills you and anoints you unto the day of redemption. And I hope that you know the God of God through His Spirit. He's not a duality, just a Father, but God Himself and the Spirit. Yes, it says that God is Spirit, but Jesus is the key, the Messiah is the key into entering into God's presence. Not only that, but to be saved. Because no other religion can you call yourself saved if you just believe in the main prophet of that holy book. Jesus Christ, yes, he's the one spoken about over 200 times in the Old Testament. Born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin. All the prophecies that were actually fulfilled the first time. There's over a hundred prophecies of his second coming. So if you can actually work out that these things happen, then you've got, you better believe he's coming back in the flesh, because Jesus said I'm coming back. Even doubting Thomas said, he doubted that it was Jesus who was risen from the dead, and he said to him, put your finger into the, the cross holes in my hands. And then when he did that, Thomas bowed down, as if worshipping him, he said, my Lord and my God. And so, yes, Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. How about that? Unless you believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Very, very plain example. He talks about in the, the Gospel of Luke that Jesus came, and also John the Baptist came, to bring his knowledge unto salvation. How does a man get saved? The whole sacrificial system in the Old Testament was with regards to sacrificing animals and then the high priest went into the Holy of Holies and confessed his own sin before he went in and confessed the sins of Israel. And he raised his hands and if that sacrifice was successful that year on the Day of Atonement then he would walk out and raise his hands and all of Israel would uh, thank God for, for the forgiveness that they received. The mercy that we received for that year. The Apostle Paul says that the, the sacrifices of the Old Testament is a shadow picture of Jesus fulfilling the carnal sacrifices. So the last carnal sacrifice that God accepted was his own son on the cross at Calvary. Now as far as I understand the rabbis were around to sacrifice chickens, swing them over their heads, do all kind of stuff, these pagan religions that sacrifice animals and all kinds of things. But these sacrifices are not accepted by God. The final one was His Son on the cross at Calvary. Praise the Lord.